Hi, my name is Rob. On the left is the day I was born. On the right is me after a bike trip from Vancouver to Halifax. That trip made me realize that our planet is actually quite small. I sometimes hum our national anthem when I walk down the street. I'm not crazy, I just love Canada. And I'm frustrated and saddened by the lack of leadership from a federal government on climate change. I first saw this image when I was 10 years old, and I drew it again last week. One, dead fish. Why? Two, strange water. Why? Three, acid rain. Why? Four, strange clouds. Why? Five, smoke from factory. Why? Six, widgets. Why? Seven, people. At an early age, I understood that we are all connected to that dead fish. One, duck covered in oil. Two, the deep water horizon rig that blew up and spilled a lot of oil. Three, demand for that oil. Four, people. It is the decisions that we each make on a daily basis that shape our collective reality. We all share in this strategy. Fun fact, the Deepwater Horizon is what inspired the name of my organization, Our Horizon. Our name is a rejection of the system that made the Deepwater Horizon a reality. Our Horizon is hopeful. That's me and my grandpa. His last words to me before he passed away last summer were, do what you love. Turns out he left me a small sum of money, so I decided to use it to launch this organization and our first campaign is about to change the world. Our idea is to put climate change warning labels on gas pump nozzles. Simple, yet, believe it or not, globally unprecedented. It's basically the image I saw when I was 10 years old, but it's exactly where you need to see it. Municipalities across Canada can use their licensing powers to require gasoline retailers to place these labels on their gas pumps. I can give you stats on carbon dioxide in our atmosphere or acidification of our oceans, but this image does it best. The warning label was made by a student at one of our workshops. Think about it. We've been burning fossil fuels that have been locked under the earth for millions of years. Where do we think all those emissions go? Climate change is a no-brainer. We have changed the basic chemistry of our planet, and the fallout is immense. This student created a label of an alien asking, how are we going to invade your planet? If the world is uninhabitable, good point. These kids are also coming to City Hall to get this idea passed into law, and I will happily do a workshop at your school. Three things about our idea. Climate change is a problem of diffusion of responsibility. As individuals, our contribution to the problem is small. Collectively, we are altering the chemistry of our planet. Because responsibility is diffuse, we fail to act. The placement of the label on the nozzle locates responsibility right in the palm of your hand. Two, climate change is a problem of no feedback. There is a delay between cause and effect, so we get no signal to change our behavior. The label creates feedback. It takes faraway consequences like famine, the extinction of species, and extreme weather, and brings them into the here and now. Three, climate change is a problem of externalities. Pricing externalities means that if the burning of fossil fuels is going to result in the extinction of a species, we need to first establish the dollar value of that species and then spread that figure over all the fossil fuels we consume. This way, we internalize the harm by reflecting it in the price of the product. So, in order to consider the impacts of our behaviors, the prevailing solutions make us ask, what is the dollar value of a species? And to the extent the drought will cause famine and death, what is the dollar value of a human life? The idea of pricing externalities is based on a particular economic worldview that knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. Our solution addresses this too. The warning labels captures and communicate externalities not in a quantitative way through the use of dollars and cents, but in a qualitative way through the use of images and text. The labels engage our sense of humanity in a way that a price increase of a few pennies at the pump never will. And even Adam Smith agrees. He wrote, by acting according to the dictates of our moral faculties, we necessarily pursue the most effectual means for promoting the happiness of mankind. But how can we act according to our moral faculties when we lack moral inputs? Our idea provides the feedback we need to engage our moral faculties and let markets work. Imagine we see these labels every time we go to gas up our vehicles. How soon would it be before people demanded more of governments and industry? The warning labels will cause some of us to change our behaviors, but more importantly, they will create a shift in our collective willingness to allow for meaningful action on climate change. People will say, but I need to gas up my car. If not this, then what? In asking the question, you open up a space for new solutions. Many cars on the road today get the exact same fuel economy as cars did over a century ago. 
Yet high school students create cars that get over 100 times the mileage. We are capable of better. We just need something to incent demand. The average income is about 46K. The annual cost of owning a typical vehicle is about 11K. This means that a quarter of your working life is spent paying for your car. If you work nine to five, the first two hours you spent sitting at your desk were used to pay for the 4,000 pounds of steel sitting in your parking lot. Imagine if you didn't have that expense. Ultimately, it's a question of mobility. Solutions can be understood to exist along a private to public spectrum. On the private side, the percentage of your income spent on mobility is high. On the public side, it's low. Private, many vehicles, slow commute. Public, few vehicles, fast commute, and so on. The point is, options are available. We just have to want them. Municipalities have led before. These are actual minutes from the town of Hudson, Quebec. In 1991, they became the first community in all of Canada to ban the use of cosmetic pesticides. Today, approximately 80% of Canadians now live under a law that can be traced back to the decision of these three councillors. Now, a community in Canada is about to pass a bylaw that will create a global precedent. Our Horizon has developed a database with the email address of every single mayor, reeve, councillor, and alder person in all of Canada. That's more than 25,000 representatives in over 4,000 municipalities that citizens can contact through our website to help advocate for the idea. Best part, we're now working on a global version of our campaign. This is my friend's baby. It is the decisions that our generation makes that will shape her future, and we have the power to change the world. So contact your councillors, commit to speaking at City Hall. Canadians can lead. Together, let us stand on guard for our Earth.